tonight in a theme that rhymes. God, work with my mind. Get me prepared for what you have for me. There are many of you, you don't have things tonight that you should have. Therefore, we should already be possessing certain things tonight, but you don't have it. You don't have it. And the reason you don't have it is your mind. So that's the reason I'm going to always prosper. Be seated. Don't get mad at me. I'm going to always prosper. Because my prosperity is tied into God. Listen, it's tied into doing his will. It's tied in doing what he wants me to do. And as long as you do what God desires for you to do, God will take good care of you. I'm finna go old folks on you and your children. He'll take care of you and your children. Ask the widow woman when she was in a famine. God took care of of the woman and the child. <laughs> Cause her to do well in a famine. Am I right about that? Cause joy, a joy of all to never run dry. Woo, that means God can prosper you based on one thing you got in the house. He can look at what you got in your house and say because of this Some of y'all don't get that. But when you get it, it changes you. Changes how you think. Am I right about that? I know the only reason I'm doing as well as I'm doing this morning is Jesus. Hold on. Don't equate it to pastor. Don't think all pastors are doing well. Woo, that, that's the thing with, 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 with simple minded people. They'll look at a couple of pastors who are multi-millionaires and they'll say stuff like, all them pastors want is your money. Hey, stop. Are there pastors that all they want is folk money? Yeah, we know that. You know in every profession there are crooks. Why should pastor be any, any different? No. But a true man of God, if he's connected to God, he going to prosper. Come on, I said he gonna do well. I said he gonna do well. He told Joshua, everywhere the soul. That's how he was with Joshua. That's divine prosperity. That means wherever you go, prosperity, you better listen, is on you. You ain't chasing prosperity. Prosperity is on you. So it's on me in Georgia. But if I go down in the Florida, it'll be on me. He said every. Let me get on into this teaching. And it's amazing how folk will struggle. And you will see the struggle. But they won't accept what Jesus came to give them. Struggling, dying, in death, in ruin. But won't receive what Jesus came to give. How many of our loved ones do we see perishing before our eyes. But they will not receive Jesus. Some don't even want to hear the message. And understand, even if you are prospering, even if you do have a good job, a good business, a good bank account, a nice home, a nice car. If you hadn't accepted Jesus, you in trouble. I said you in serious trouble. Because when you die, you can't take any of it with you. But see, I'm going to prove to you today that the life we live now, there is a life after this life. Right? Now, when the Bible says, or when I say to us, I've been redeemed. I want to give you three things that what it means to be redeemed. And every last one of them are important. Number one, it says that Jesus atoned or made amends 
for our sins. He atoned for it. He made amends. Listen, for our sins, our transgressions, he atoned for it. Listen, and he alone could do it. He alone could do it. He atoned. He made amends. Listen, for our sins against God. This is the reason when he did it in the end, he said, it is finished. Come on, somebody. He said, it is finished. What's finished, Lord? The atonement. I made amends. You better listen to me. Not just for one type of people. That's what certain religious miss it. He didn't just come for the black man. Shame on you for believing that lie. This is bigger than the black man. Woo, it's bigger than the red man. It's this bigger than the white man. Because you have black men rejecting it, saying it's the white man's religion. He made atonement, listen, for all mankind. Come on. Had a guy going to call the church one time, wouldn't tell me what he wanted in the beginning. And I normally don't answer the phone, but I answered it that day. Probably a mistake. No, I believe God want me to talk to him. He kept going. I, I said, look, brother, I, said, I got stuff. I said, I, said, I, said, I said, what you trying to say? What, what were you getting to? You know, everybody can't be saved. Oh, Lord. All right, brother, you done called the wrong one. Because I know better. That's the, that's the game they play. But see, when he came, he made amends. Come on. For all mankind. That's one of the reasons when he was dying on that cross, when he died, that veil was ripped. He was doing something in that moment that were bigger than just the Jewish people. Y'all better listen to me. Number two. Now, now, now y'all know how I teach. Look like some heads dropped in. I teach no matter who you are, be proud of who you are. I ain't pro-black, it's just that I happen to be black. On the camera side. Or calm. But I'm still a black man. Come on, somebody. No, I ain't left that long. Yeah, but everybody need to be proud of who God made them. This is important. Because when you start arguing of fighting against your creator, one of the first fights you wage against him is who he created you to be. That's the reason you got women trying to be men. They're fighting against what God ordained or created them to be. And now they want me to play that foolish game. I say no. I ain't calling a man a woman. Just cause he done went and got breasts and had his cheekbones shaved down, esophagus trimmed. He can't do that with them feet though. That's a man. I'm not gonna play that game. Come on, somebody. Now I'm not, not out here hating on folk. But God created them male and female. Now you can't go back and say to God as a woman that there's a man trap inside of you. There's a demon trap inside of you. You need deliverance from that spirit. Watch this. That has you warring against yourself. Be seated. Because all the medicine they pumping in people trying to take testosterone out of a man you can't do it because that's what God created 
Oh, that's when if you dig up somebody that died saying they were what they wasn't, DNA gonna tell you what God did. I didn't even want to go there, but, I, but I'm telling you. Number two, Jesus saved us. And if you're out there and you like that, listen, I want you to know he died for you. Right? Church shouldn't be a church that hate homosexuals. We need to love people that are mixed up like that. Love them enough to tell them the truth. Don't lie to your loved one. Don't play that game. I love you, but you're wrong. You're wrong. Right? Some of y'all act like you don't like when I preach like that. You know it's a hole in this church. I can't take certain passages of the Bible and just rip them out for you. But we got love for them. Because why? He loved us. Right? He loved some of you when you were strung out on crack, stealing from your own parents. But he, lo he loved you. Right? Jesus saved us, number two, from eternal death or damnation. See, see, that's what that redemption was about. Jesus saving us. Listen, from eternal death or eternal damnation. We know death basically in four parts. Death is physical. Death is spiritual. Death is eternal. And death figuratively is about ruin or destruction. He saved us from all. Do you understand that? But never think that hell is not real. Don't ever think that. Don't ever think that. Because that's what he came to deliver us from. That's that eternal damnation. The final and ultimate stage of death. Listen, you need to know these things. Is eternal death. There is no comeback from that. People are gambling with their lives. Well, I don't believe in God. It's your right to, to say that. To even live like that. But when you die. You will answer to God. You're going to answer for every message. That you heard. That you rejected. Because you were never caught up. In anything. That he was not able. To rescue you from. So what is your excuse? You will be without excuse. Am I right? Number three, Jesus paid the price for us, this is important, to be made righteous. There was nothing you could do, there was nothing I could do in and of ourselves to be righteous. Come on here, somebody. But when Jesus redeemed us, he made us the righteousness of God. This is so important. He didn't make us perfect. Come on. You ain't perfect. You ain't perfect. I wish I'd come out there and tap you on your shoulder. You ain't perfect. I'm not perfect. You can stay in a room seven days and lock yourself in that room. And in some way, you're going to sin. How, Pastor? If I don't cut the TV on, I don't do it. You got your mind to deal with. You got your flesh to deal with. The very thought. Watch this. The Bible teaches that the very thought of foolishness is sin. Come on, somebody. So he redeemed us. He made us righteous. Are we better off? Are we better than people? No. Are we better off than people? Yes. How can we be on our way to heaven, folks on their way to hell, and we not say of ourselves, well, I'm better off. We're not better than because they have an opportunity to get on the same path. Do, do you see my point? 
But, but, but now Donnie McClurkin missed it now. I, I, I'm not a sinner that fell down and got up. No. No. Pastor, that's my favorite song. Don't care. No. No, we're not sinner. We're not sinner. We're not practicing sin. If you practice in sin, you need saving. It's just that simple. If you practice in sin, you need saving. Right? But we mess up. We miss the mark. That's what somebody here needs to understand. God is not calling for you to be perfect. He already understands that you can never be perfect. Because to be perfect, woo, teach it right, Pastor, is to be God. You know that there's only one God. There's only one person that's perfect. Right? But some of us married to people who think they, well, let's go on. John, John 3. Look at John 3. <laughs> John 3.